All right, dudes, it's day 16 of Vita. Today's prompt, to discuss our drinking habits. My drinking habit consists mostly of beer. So on that so science, we're gonna take a small glance at the science of beer. That's so science. <sighs> Takes on Vita. Most beer is made from grain. So the first step of the beer making process is to sow crushed grains in water. The water has to be hot, around 148 to 152 degrees Fahrenheit. This heat allows a specific enzyme amylase to convert starches into fermentable sugars. This mixture of hot water and grain is called wort. Wort is pretty sugary, so at this stage, hops are added. I hear all the time people saying, ooh, this beer has a very hoppy flavor. And I have no idea what they mean. Hops are the female flowers of this plant. The hop plant, Humulus lupulus. Hops not only add bitter, but they do a whole bunch of other really cool things. They protect against unwanted infection by certain bacteria, and they provide other flavors, kind of citrusy, herbally, or earthy flavors. The second major step of making beer is fermentation. Yeast is added to the solution. Yeast essentially converts the sugar in the solution to alcohol. Now after the yeast is added, the solution is cooled slightly to around room temperature. The fermentation containers look like this. The solution plus the yeast is left sealed in these containers for a duration of time, up to several weeks. Now here comes the cool sciency part of the beer making process. Most organisms get their energy from breaking down large molecules like carbohydrates, but this process requires oxygen. But yeast doesn't always, it can survive perfectly fine without it. What happens when there's no oxygen? Fermentation happens. During this process, large molecules like carbohydrates are broken down. Pyruvate is broken down to release energy. Ethanol winds up being the byproduct of this biological process. Thanks, yeast! Now this process is similar for most beers. There is a ton of different kind of beer out there. You got stout, porter, lager, ale, etc. So how do these different flavors affect the process of making beer? Some different flavors use different types of grain and are even stored at different temperatures for different lengths of time. For example, ale yeast tend to ferment best in the mid-60s Fahrenheit. Lager yeast prefer to be kept at a slightly cooler temperature in the mid-50s Fahrenheit, like cellar temperature. Lager is needed to be stored for a lot longer than other types of beers. They are lagered. They are stored for a month or more at very cool temperatures, down to the mid-30s, to ward off any kind of unwanted flavors. So after the fermentation process is complete, it's time to bottle the beer. Beer is bottled with a little bit of sugar added to it to produce carbonation. Here's an age old tavern question. Why are beer bottles brown? They are brown to stop light from getting in. The energy from light catalyzes the breakdown of hop oils and changes the flavor. The bitter substances from the hop oils break down to give off a skunky flavor. And while some people enjoy that, I don't. Ironically, aluminum cans are actually the best for keeping out light and for sealing off all air from getting into the beer. So while drinking beer out of a bottle may look cool at a bar, it's not always the best. Best way to drink beer is in a glass. That way, you get all the aromas straight to your nose and it really gives you a full body flavor. Taste all the aromas! This particular beer is homebrew. This one's actually coffee flavored beer. Definitely has a coffee aftertaste. That's one of the really cool things about beer. You can make your own. Check out some links down below and see if it's something you'd like to get interested in. Don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button. Comment below, that would be super duper. Tell me what kind of beers you like. I like IPAs and hoppy flavors. What about you? Check out this awesome cab that was on this bottle.